Like this bread, it's delicious. Hey friends, this is Angela from Art of Creation Homestead. And you're in the kitchen with me again for another Homestead Kitchen Skills. Today, I am going to teach you how to make homemade bread. Now this is a, an easy one. This is a one rice bread that can be used for toast or sandwiches or anything. And it can also be used for several other things. So this is what you call a master recipe. Because once you know how to do this, you can do several things with this dough. So what we're gonna do at first, because this is a one rice, we are going to start by making a sponge. And how you do that, in this bowl there are two cups of bread flour. Yes, you do wanna use bread flour with this. There are two cups of bread flour, one tablespoon of rapid rise yeast. This is instant yeast, this is SAF. I use SAF, I will leave a link in the description below. And we have two and a fourth cups of warm water. You want it between 110 and 115. And as I've told you guys before, I store my yeast in the, in the freezer so it's cold, very cold. So it needs a little extra heat to wake it up. So I usually err on the side of closer to 115 between 112 and 115. So what I mean by making a sponge is I'm stirring those two cups of flour, the two and a fourth cups of water, and the one tablespoon of yeast. I'm stirring that together and essentially making a quick ferment. That's what a sponge is in, in bread making. I am basically doing a quick ferment so I, I essentially have a quick starter for my bread. Because now we are going to leave this sponge to sit and for the yeast to take control and basically fer start fermenting. Almost like a sourdough. But this only will take 15 minutes. So I'm gonna leave this sit to sponge for 15 minutes. It's been 15 minutes, and as you can see, on top of your sponge, there's bubbles everywhere. It's going to bubble like crazy. That shows you that your sponge is alive, and it's went through that like pre-ferment stage. Now, you wanna stir that around, and you, you can see it's gotten very thick, very foamy. This whole, the whole process of sponging is just fascinating to me because it, it makes this so much quicker and easier to do than a very slow rise bread. And it also gives the bread really good structure. To this we are adding one fourth of a cup of a neutral flavored oil. You guys know we use avocado oil. We are adding a third of a cup of honey. That's gonna be your sweetener in this. All. All bread pretty much has a sweetener of some sort. I prefer to use honey over sugar in just regular loaf bread. I think you get a better flavor. And also it's more natural. Now, this next step, you can choose to do it or you can choose not to do it. I choose to do it because it will add richness and structure to your bread. I am going to add one large egg. If you choose not to add the egg, then when you make your sponge, you will need to add about a fourth of a cup more warm water. Because if you add an egg, you always need to take out a fourth of a cup of water. So, we are going to stir all of this together. Make sure that egg is mixed in really well. 
because you don't <laughs> you don't want to leave any clumps of egg in there and also you've got to remember that your sponge is still very warm and you don't want to curdle that egg in there either and in turn you kind of want the egg to be closer to room temperature so that it doesn't kill your yeast because even though it's sponged you can still kill it so now it's all mixed in and now we are going to add two teaspoons of salt don't don't leave out the salt otherwise this bread will not taste very good and now we are going to add in four cups of flour and you want to leave one over to the side remember as i've told you with other bread making recipes that i've showed you that's your just in case flour it's just in case you need it so we've got that extra flour over to the side just in case we need it now remember you have to let your bread talk to you you have to let your dough talk to you it's going to ship it's going to tell you what it needs and what it don't need so now you want to stir all of that flour in and it's going to be it's going to end up being a beautiful dough but you may or may not need that one that other cup sometimes i do sometimes i don't most of the time i don't <laughs> this this bread is so easy and so versatile this is the bread that during the great food shortage of 2020 i was making this bread two and three times a week we used it for toast we used it for sandwiches we used it for pretty much everything because this bread is so easy to mix up that you it's no it's no big deal to make homemade bread when you've got a recipe that's this easy so now i'm gonna go in with my hands you guys know that's my favorite tools is the two that god put at the end of my wrist so just like i've told you with other bread recipes you want it to clean the bowl and if it's not clean in the bowl then it's still hungry and as you can see it's it's getting there after just those four cups it's getting there but it's not quite there yet so i'm going to add just a couple of tablespoons you don't want to go dumping all, all, that whole cup in because you may not need that whole cup you have to listen to your dough it's trying to talk to you and trying to tell you if it's still hungry and as you can see it's starting to clean the bowl but it's still sticky it's still sticking to my fingers so we're going to add about a tablespoon more because it's not going to need much more because it's already starting to pull away from the bowl nicely and it's already starting to clean your bowl really nicely it's just still a little sticky you can also do this in a kitchen aid mixer that's normally the way i do it but because i know not everyone has a kitchen aid i'm just going to show you how to do it by hand and show you just how easy it really is to do it by hand and it's cleaning the bowl better but it's still just a little sticky so i'm going to add about a half a tablespoon you don't even want a full tablespoon with this one because i don't think it's going to take a full tablespoon because it's already starting to clean your bowl really well and see now your bowl is all clean just that quickly and with that little bit of flour because you used very little out of your just in case flour so now we are going to put it out on our surface on a very clean surface and we are going to start to knead it now this dough i've told you some bread doughs 
I will use flour on the surface. Others, I will use oil. For a bread dough like this, I will usually use oil because this has an egg in it. I may start out adding just a little bit of flour to the surface, but after one time adding flour, you do not want to add flour anymore. After this, if it starts to stick again, you want to use oil. You want to knead this until a smooth elastic ball of dough forms. That will take about, by hand, it could take about as much as 10 minutes. In a KitchenAid, it will probably take about five minutes. And remember, this is how you knead, for those of you who may not have saw any of my other bread making videos. Fold over, push away from you, turn. Fold over, push away from you, turn. And you just keep doing that. And as you can see, it's a large mass of bread dough. And it's so soft already. And you can already feel it starting to get more elastic. This dough, the reason I call it a master dough is because it can be used for either making two loaves of bread because this, this mass right here will make two loaves of bread. It, so you can use it to make two loaves of bread or you can use it to make dinner rolls. It, you can use it to make cinnamon raisin bread. You can use it for any number of things. That's why I call it a master dough recipe because once you master this dough, basically, then you can make anything that you want with it. And see, it's already starting to get smooth and elastic and that's what you want it to do. You want it to get nice and smooth and elastic. It's okay if it starts to feel a little tacky but if it starts to stick to your hands again or stick to the surface, then you will want to put down just a little bit of oil. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna put down just a little thin sheen of oil. You just, literally, maybe a half a teaspoon on your surface, work it around, and then start kneading again. And that should take care of any sticking problems you have. But if it does start to stick again, do oil, not flour. And I will be back and show you what this looks like when it's all smooth and elastic. It's been about seven to eight minutes. And as you can see, you have a really smooth ball of dough. And see, when you push on it, it springs right back. That shows you that it's nice and elastic and that the glutens have been worked really well. So now that you have a nice smooth ball of nice elastic dough, now you want to put it back in your bowl and you just want to leave it rest at this point because like I told you, it's a one rise bread. So this isn't to rise, this is just to rest before you shape it into your loaves. So you're gonna leave this to rest, covered with a, a kitchen towel, for 15 more minutes. Okay, as you can see, it's rested for 15 minutes. It's grew just a little bit, but not a lot. Because you don't want it to rise. So now we're gonna take it out of the bowl. <laughs> and make a big loud noise. <laughs> and now, we are going to make this into our loaves. And over here, we have two loaf pans, just standard loaf pans that have lined with parchment paper. And you want to oil those up a little bit because you don't want your bread to stick. So now we are going to split this into two balls of dough. Two roughly even balls of dough. If you want them exactly even, you can wet, put them on a scale and weigh them but I don't care if they're exactly even. <laughs> so now you want to pat them out. I'm gonna put this one back in the bowl. Now you wanna pat this out really good. You wanna stretch it out and pat it out into a rectangle. 
and if it starts to stick on you at this point because you are messing with rolling it into a loaf you can flour it just a little bit but you really kind of want that stickage because you want it to stick together with what you're about to do so you want to stretch it out into a rough rectangle now I'm going to fold it over this way fold it over this way make a triangle now we're going to tuck over and pull back to you and you just keep doing that until you get a nice loaf. Why'd you do the tuck over? Uh, why'd you fold it like that? What's the point of that? It just gets a tighter roll. Okay. You just get a tighter roll than just rolling it. Mm -hmm. You get a much tighter roll if you do the triangle first. Mm -hmm. And see, now you tuck in your ends and you pinch your seam together. And you see, now you have a nice Loaf. If you don't pinch that steam together, does it kind of mess with with the? It how will it looks? explode. Oh really? It it won't explode. Okay. Literally explode, but it will pop open. I got you. It's kind and of it split. will be as pretty. So it's so it's a detail that really doesn't need to be skipped. Just these yes. little details make a difference when you're, yes. when you're doing this. Okay. So see now you have a beautiful loaf. Cool. You want to put it in your pan and kind of push down just a little bit. Now you wanna go ahead and shape your other one. The same way, just pat it out. And because this is so quick, I'll just go ahead and show you how to do this one too. That way if there's any question, you see, because it's, it's literally this quick. So, fold over, push down. Fold over, push down, make a triangle. Now, push, pull back toward you, Fold over, pull back, fold over, pull back, fold over, pull back, fold over, until you have a, a loaf. Now push in your sides. It looks like a massive hoagie roll. When you do it. <laughs> and pinch your seam together. And see, this is why you really don't want to flour at that point. Because if you've got a lot of flour or oil on your dough, your seam will not pinch together real good. Makes sense and you will not get that good pinch. And it could, you could have a dough blowout. You could have a dough blowout and you don't want a dough blowout. So if you see any air bubbles like this one right here, just take your fingers, pull them apart and break them. Cause you don't, you don't really want air bubbles. That's part of the reason that I did the triangle and then pulled and stretched as I was rolling it because it keeps you from getting that those air bubbles. Now you wanna put it in your pan. And like I said, if you see any more of those, just break them. Because you really don't want those in your bread. Now, you want to put these in a warm place to rise. This will usually take about 45 minutes to an hour. You want them to double in size. And that depends on how warm the environment you put them in is. I usually put mine in the oven with the light on. Not the, don't turn the oven on, just the light. And you wanna leave them in there until they double in size, keep a close eye on them, and when they, they have doubled, then you can take it out. So treat them like some baby chickens, draft free and warm. Yes, exactly. Gotcha. It's been an hour, and as you can see, these beauties are, have doubled in size, and they're absolutely beautiful loaves of bread. Now, at this point, you have a choice. You can either leave them round topped, like these are, or you can take a knife and you can do a split top or you can do slashes on top. You don't have to. You can just leave it a round loaf or you can cut it. Could you swirl it around? I wouldn't recommend that. Oh, okay, just check it. Usually I just leave these a round loaf because <laughs> they they make a good sandwich bread okay. that way. So now you want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees and you will bake these until they're nice and golden brown it should take about a half an hour. These beautiful loaves of bread are out of the oven now. It's been about 30 minutes, and I I rotated them about halfway through. I, I spun the pans around. That way they bake evenly. This is the reason you wanna line your pan, because you can use this as a sling to pull out your bread easily. 
And it cools much better that way. Because you want to pull them out of the pan almost immediately. Yeah. Now I'll show you. It's awesome. And listen. Beautiful. That's how you know when it's ready. Because you get that nice hollow thump. They smell so good too. It's like the most relaxing, comforting smell. See? Mm. Look at those two beauties. Yep. Now, you want to leave them for about 10 minutes and then I'll show you what you do to them next to make them even better. It's been 10 minutes. Now we're going to make these even better. I've got a good, probably a couple tablespoons of salted butter and you're just going to rub it all over the top. And grease it down real good with some butter. That will make it even better. It's nice and shiny. <laughs> yeah, it makes it even better to have that buttery top. Now, look, I you got me kind of craving some fresh brick baked bread here. I want you to slice me a piece right now. You don't want to do that. Why not? <laughs> because first off, it will slice much easier much cleaner mm -hmm. if it's cooled down some right because it's just gonna mash down yeah it was warm and just smashes but if you wait you'll get a much cleaner cut but that's not even the most important reason mm -hmm. the most important reason is because if you slice fresh bread that's fresh out of the oven all of your moisture is going to go out and steam and that's you're going to end up with dry bread similar to like letting your letting your steak rest yes yeah right look at that that's awesome isn't that gorgeous yep we'll be back and i'll show you how beautiful it is when i slice it now we're ready to cut this beauty good because i'm ready to eat it now you want to use a good bread knife that it has a good serrated edge Look at that. And look at that beauty. Look at that. That's cool. Look how soft and how beautiful that is. The crumb on that is absolutely gorgeous. It is. Now Jason gets to try it. Alright, see? We're right here. I'm going to taste this bad boy. Mmm. That's awesome, bro. It's so wonderful and it's so good. It's thick and hearty. I mean, I can't beat it. Again, such a wonderful, delicious, just homey, tasty. You, know, I, you can't beat it. So make your own bread. Honestly, it's it's very rewarding and holds up to me being a sandwich squeezer too. I'm gonna make a sandwich out of them. So makes really good toast. It makes great toast. And good French toast. When it starts getting a little old, make some French toast. <laughs> yes, definitely. Makes great French toast, honestly. So thank you guys so much for watching. Again, make this bread. It's delicious. My name is Jason. That's Angela Case, Art of Creation Homestead. We love you guys. God bless you and goodbye.